So in this video, we're continuing on with the saga of Reginald and Tony and their two coins. And our goal is to estimate theta 1, the Bernoulli parameter for Reginald's coin, and theta 2, the Bernoulli parameter for Tony's coin. And here's what our data consists of, initial data frame, is we've got our two subjects, Reginald and Tony, and our data consists of a series of zeros and ones, where one means that a head was obtained, zero means that a tail was obtained. And implicitly, we can think of i as being the row number, and then what we're going to see eventually is we're going to modify our data. So that subject is no longer a character. It's no longer going to be a person's name. It's going to be a factor, and therefore it's going to be stored as a number. So when we have done that, Reginald's going to turn out to be a 1, and Tony is going to turn out to be a 2. So here's our model statement. Any valid name will do. Open quote, keyword, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, close quote down here. Three components, likelihood, there's the likelihood there, the priors, there's the priors here, and some derived quantities, the derived quantities are shown there. Okay, so when we look at this code, we're going to start with the likelihood. And so we're going to have this for statement, and there's its open parenthesis, and there's its closed parenthesis, and there is a line that really matters. And it is a little bit tricky because what we want is we want the y value for Tony to be distributed with dburn theta 2, whereas the y value for Reginald is going to be dburn theta 1. And the trick is to type in this code and understand how this code is actually going to accomplish it. And it's really kind of hard to understand, but I'm going to do my best to try to explain it. So what we want Again, for Reginald, yi is going to be Bernoulli distributed parameter theta indexed by 1. So there's our subject 1 indicating that it's associated with Reginald. And for Tony, yi is going to be we're newly distributed theta 2. So there's Tony. Remember, Tony's going to be a 2. So let's think about an example. Let's think about what happens when we're trying to get the likelihood and we're considering the third value of y. It's going to be, if we consider what we've written here, it's going to be dburn theta and we're going to have subject and then we're going to have i and then we're going to have all these funky double square brackets so how are we meant to understand this well if we think about y3 then this value here of i is going to be 3. So if we come up here and look at i is equal to 3, what's the subject? What's the subject associated with y is e i is equal to 3? That's Reginald. So what we've really got here is that y3 
It's going to be Bernoulli distributed. Theta one. And the reason is when I is equal to three, subject is equal to one. Now, if we were to change this to a 10, change that to a 10, then y10, y10, so when i is equal to 10, subject is equal to 2. So now this is going to change to a 2. So, it's a little bit complicated, and you're just going to have to spend some time thinking about it, but that's the way it's going to work. Then we've got our priors. We have to specify a prior both for Reginald and for Tony. Now, one way I could do this is to say that, okay, for Reginald, the prior is going to be a d beta 2, 2. So, we could say that theta 1 is equal to that. And then we could have said for Tony, theta 2 is d beta 2, 2. That works well and you want to get a couple of people. We had a whole bunch of people. It's not really efficient. So what we're going to do is in a more general sense, we're going to create another loop. So now we're going to loop over the number of subjects. So here where we looped over the number of observations, we're going to see that we had 15 of those. We've got two different subjects subject 1 and subject 2, we're going to loop over there. So there's the beginning and the closing. And in each case, theta is going to be a d beta 2, 2, regardless of whether subject is a 1 or if it's a 2. So that's really the guts of our model. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create these derived quantities. We're going to calculate the difference between the theta for Tony minus Reginald and the ratio of Tony divided by Reginald. And notice that when we come up here, we've got tildes. And when we come here, we've got equal sign, and we see that reflected in our flow chart. So that's the model. We got to think about our data file. So initially, this data file had only those two variables, y and subject. And what you're going to see in your notes is that in fact we do take subject that initially was a character and we convert it into being a factor. We're also going to have to create these two new variables. This one, this one. So the length is going to be 15 because that's the number of observations and the unique number of subjects is going to be 2. We don't have to put this thing in but what we can do is we can look at the list that we've created and we can see that it's got these four different items y subject and you'll see this in the notes where what we've done is written some code so that Reginald and Tony that initially would have been characters are now stored as ones and twos and then we've got these two values and then we create the data for JAGs in a format that JAGs will understand we need to initialize, we need to have initial values for both theta 1 and theta 2. And the way we specify that is there's a list function and we say theta. And then because we've got theta indexed by 1 and 2, we have C for concatenation and then put in two values. So this would be the initial value of theta for Reginald. This would be the initial theta value for Tony. And here's how we generate our results. Diff and ratio is pretty straightforward. Theta, we're going to monitor theta. Now we've got theta 1 and theta 2. But in a sense, all we've really got is theta indexed by either 1 or 2. So therefore, we can just specify theta, specify our data, list of initial values, number of chains. I've changed the autocorrelation to 1. 
and we come down here and we see the results and typically what we're most concerned with are things like the median the mean and the mode and they're all pretty much the same and the 95 percent confidence intervals or excuse me credible intervals this is bayesian credible intervals on the mean we can do some plotting so we get these four pl panel plots where here is our trace plot so you can see we're getting pretty good mixing of the chains this is the, the important one so all these four panels here are for the variable the parameter theta one the Bernoulli binomial parameter for Reginald's coin and this is the part that really matters this is what we're really interested down here because what's this this is the posterior distribution of theta for Reginald's coin this thing here is just an accumulation of this thing here here's the autocorrelation plot very simple data frame very simple data experiment we don't see any autocorrelation and what I've done here is I've gone back and I've gotten the posterior distributions for the four things that we're interested in you've got Bernoulli binomial for Reginald Bernoulli binomial for Tony the diff the difference between Tony minus Reginald and the ratio the ratio of Tony divided by by Reginald and this is the one to me which in some ways is the most fascinating now there's no particular reason why you'd want to care about the ratio but let's say you're in a situation where you actually wanted to know the ratio of something like theta 1 and theta 2 and just think for a moment how difficult that would be if you were using a frequentist approach and now think about how really simple it is to do it with Bayes and also the whole idea that what we get is the entire posterior distribution and to me that's a lot more meaningful in many cases than just looking at summary statistics I think we tend to get too drawn into summary statistics and you know unless we've got something that's really normal and here we don't have something that's terribly normal it's far more informative to see the posterior distribution so fair amount of material covered I think the big challenge the big challenge is going to be comes right up here trying to understand the syntax that's shown right here this double square bracketed nesting index and it's just a question of spending a whole bunch of time staring at that and trying to get your head around it